This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're looking at the ASUS Vivo Tab TF810C. This is ASUS's 11.6-inch Intel Atom Windows 8 machine. Keyboard dock here, optional, $199 more. We'll talk about all that. The nice thing about the ASUS is it has a Wacom digitizer and comes with a Wacom pen, so you note-takers and digital artists will probably be interested in this. We're going to look at it now. So this is the ASUS Vivo Tab TF810C. It's been out for, oh, about a month now, but it's been very hard to find in stores. It comes and it goes, particularly here in the U.S. You have to hunt for it. You won't find it in too many bricks and mortar stores. Though if you do have a micro center near you, that's going to be your best bet if you want to actually see this guy in person. And it's yet another Intel Atom Transformer style Windows 8 tablet. Now, ASUS, well, they invented the Transformer style, so hey, they have every right to be making a Transformer. And this has a lot of shared DNA with the ASUS Transformer Android tablets, right down to the keyboard dock, which is optional. First, this is a 1.8 gigahertz maximum speed Intel Atom dual core CPU. That's the Clover Trail that we're seeing in all the Windows 8 tablets, the Z2760. 2 gigs of DDR2 RAM, 64 gigs of internal storage, that's eMMC interface. Now all these Atom tablets use that, that's a limitation of Atom, it doesn't address mSATA. Also the 2 gigs of RAM is a limitation of Atom, that's it, that's the maximum. Likewise it's a 32-bit CPU, so you're getting Windows 8 32-bit here, no 64-bit for you. Most folks probably won't care too much about whether they have 32 or 64-bit to be honest, it's really about how good perceived performance is. And as we look at all of these Atom tablets, honestly the performance is pretty darn close among all of them. So you're just not going to see any variation in terms of the specs that matter for horsepower and performance here. And benchmark scores are pretty darn close too. Tablet weighs 1.49 pounds. That's pretty much standard fare for Windows 8 tablets that are 11.6 inches. The HP Envy X2 is similar as a matter of fact. So is the Samsung T 500T Smart PC. And the dock here is optional. Lovely dock. ASUS has certainly been doing this long enough they can perfect it. One thing I can tell you, if you've used the Android docks at 10.1 inches, they were kind of small, weren't they? They were never very easy to type on. This guy, 11.6 inches, more room to spread out to grow. So a much more pleasing typing experience here. Uh, it's right up there with the NVX2. I still prefer the NVX2 keyboard a little bit more, but honestly both of them are good. No squish, no mushiness right here. Nice island style discrete keys. Actual Synaptics trackpad here works quite well. Docking mechanism is up top along this edge. And it's it's certainly better than the Samsung Ativ Smart PCs, which it was prone to disconnects and was never a very sure thing. But this little lever up here is released by a sliding latch on the tablet itself. A little bit less smooth than the Envy design, but still not so bad at all. And the data connection is actually here. Take a look at the side. Typical ASUS tapered look. Nice metal going on. We've got USB port right here. And this is our charging connector on this side. Another USB port right here, full size. Both USB 2.0. That's yet another limitation of the Intel Atom. Doesn't do USB 3.0. Not a backlit keyboard. These transformer and detachable types generally aren't. And this weighs one and a half pounds, so it's about the same weight as the tablet. So in terms of balance, it's pretty good. And we've got some rubber feet here on the bottom that help you with grip. And this piece that sticks out has some little rubber feet on it too, so it doesn't get scratched. And so it gives you a little bit more grip too. Tablet sells for $7.99 in the U.S. The dock is another $1.99, so you're looking at $1,000 total. So yeah, that's the biggest problem with this product. Here in the United States, it's priced higher than all the other Intel Atom tablets, and in fact, it's right up there with a nice Frufru Ultrabook in terms of pricing, and obviously the Surface Pro you could get for the same price. The selling point of the Atom is the long battery life, but still there are competitors that sell for less, like the Samsung AT 500T and the NVX2. If you need the pen, you're going to look mostly at the Samsung AT 500T. That one is quite plasticky compared to this, which is nice and metal. Now if we take a look around, you can see on the back side here, mostly metal, nice looking, plastic up top so we don't have interference with our wireless antennas. That's a lesson that ASUS learned from their Android tablets. 8 megapixel camera here, f2.2 lens, backside illuminated sensor, and a flash, so better stuff than you generally see on Windows tablets, and it actually takes pretty decent photos and video. On this side here we have our headphone jack, 
This is our micro SD card slot. It is compatible with SD XC high capacity cards. Slider release for the optional dock. Holes on the bottom to go into the dock and mate with it. Up top we have our power button on the corner. And on this side we have our volume controls and a little rubber cover over the micro HDMI port. Let me tell you, that is really hard to get off. So yes, that is actually removable. You're probably going to poke at and think, oh my goodness, should I really be pulling on this? It's really tight, but yes, it is. It's a very thin tablet. It's a nice looking tablet. Fairly light. And to dock it in, you just line up all the little arrows. All these are a little bit fiddly, but not too bad. Press down until it clicks. And you'll see a little docked in or docked out, depending on whether you've just stuck it in there or pulled it out. So now it looks just like a little 11.6 inch Ultrabook. Not bad. One thing I'm not so fond of here, let me turn this sideways so you can see. It does not go back terribly far. That's as far back as it's going to go. And there's a lot of play here. Check that out, right? That's a bit annoying. Now, when you're poking at the screen, it does rest with gravity far back, but I'm not so fond of that. And when you close it, by the way, the notebook will go to sleep when you do that. This is kind of loose, too. Most of them are pretty darn snug, but this one, well, yeah. But as you can see, you still need two hands to open it, despite the fact it has that kind of floppy thing going on. And on the back here, you see this little sticker. That's the NFC symbol. The tablet has NFC. It also has a Broadcom geolocation module, otherwise known as basic GPS feature, which is nice. See this grill right here? That's your speaker grill. There's another one here. Now, Asus says this is a quad speaker system. Maybe this is in their definition of, that they kind of use with Android tablets, where they had stereo speakers, but two were side by side. I'm assuming that there's two here and two here, because I have not found any other speaker grills so far. By the way, all the stickers do come off. We just left them on so you can see how the unit ships. And that includes the big old sticker that is on the keyboard dock right here that tells you how to use the keyboard dock. When you buy the tablet, clearly you're going to get a charger. And this is the charger that you get. It's quite small. It's only 10 watts. So this is not the world's fastest charger, especially if you're charging both the dock and the tablet. That's a lot of battery to be charging with this teeny weeny little charger. It can take up to six hours to charge them both. As a detachable... USB port on this side, and on this end it mates to the proprietary connector that's on both the tablet and on the dock. Since there's no USB port on the tablet itself, again we get a sort of a SUSE Transformer Android tablet like little USB host adapter that plugs into the bottom dock port on the tablet, which is over here and has a USB port over here. The drawback with this is obviously it's kind of an inconvenient location when it's sticking out the bottom. So you're going to have to find some way to prop up the tablet high enough if it's on a stand so that the cord and whatever you're plugging in here doesn't get in the way. Or you can go with the keyboard dock obviously and have two USB 2.0 ports on that. And lastly, our favorite, here it is, Wacom Digitizer Wacom Pen. Nice size pen, really nice feel. It's got a little clip here so you can clip it onto your shirt or your case and try not to lose it. We have a single button here. We have a nice rounded soft eraser stick pointer on the back. And it comes with a nib puller and some spare nibs. You know, people complain about, oh, there's no silo for the pen. But whenever there is, because everybody wants these devices to be as thin as possible, it's some puny little toothpick. So I would rather have a real stylus and learn how to keep track of it than have to deal with some nasty little toothpick. So what's the appeal with Atom-based tablets versus their core i5 brethren? Well, obviously it's going to be battery life. At this point, you've probably watched a couple of our video reviews, and you know that Intel Atom CPUs are very, very power frugal, and they last much longer than core i5s. There's also no fan here, so it's silent operation, and it does not get hot. At worst, it might get a little bit warm on the back. The drawback is obviously the performance. Now, it's perfectly fine for productivity tasks. Anything in the live tile interface here you download from Microsoft Store is going to run fine. But we also have full Windows 8 here, traditional desktop. And some of those apps, particularly launch times, are kind of sluggish. No 3D gaming going on here, really, other than the kinds of games you're going to find in the Microsoft Store. This has PowerVR graphics that can't even touch Intel HD 4000 integrated graphics, honestly, so not even something like Left 4 Dead. Sorry about that. Maybe Diablo 1. That's about as far as we're going there. But battery life, pretty impressive on this guy. 
ASUS claims 10 and a half hours of battery from operation time from the 30 watt hour battery that's inside the tablet alone and they're not overestimating overestimating it that much in our test so far we've been getting like eight and a half hours so it's right up there with the top atom tablets in terms of battery life now the dock adds another 25 watt hour battery inside so you can go over they claim up to about 19 hours we're still working and trying to kill the combo i would say realistically we're looking at about 16 17 so there it is. That's something you just can't do with a Core i5 or any AMD-based system right now. You can't go for that long without plugging in and charging. So it's pretty phenomenal in that respect. In terms of benchmark performance, PC Mark 7 it scored 1256, which is similar to the Samsung Ative Smart PC 500T and under the Envy X2, which scored about 1400. Now all these are relatively low numbers compared to the 5000s for Ultrabooks and. A hundred point difference. I don't know how much you can feel it though. I would say that this one feels pretty, pretty darn snappy. One thing that's important to note is ASUS didn't have any driver updates for this for the first month that it was out and Intel Atom had a lot of bugs under Windows 8 that could make it seem sluggish, crashy, all that kind of thing. And ASUS has finally made those drivers available only via live update. You can't get it from their website yet, which is a shame because the live update application itself is a little bit quacky. We had to try several times for it to actually get through and do it. But once it did, Improvement definitely in perceived performance and in stability. stability. So for our Windows Experience Index on a scale of 1 to 9.9, .9, you can see our scores here. Processor 3.4, memory is 4.7, desktop graphics 3.6, 3D graphics 3.2, and primary hard disk, which is the MMC uh, solid state storage, is 5.8. And that's part of the course for Atom systems. They're all going to be pretty much the same. They all have the same CPU, the same RAM, and the same storage system on tablet. The tablet has single band Wi-Fi, 802.11bgn, Bluetooth 4.0, NFC, and as we mentioned that GPS, which is pretty much a rarity on these tablets. As a front 2 megapixel camera, pretty good quality, very very nice for video chat with Skype. The tablet has a 1366 by 768 IPS display. So far with Intel Atom tablets, we've not seen full HD. I think it's just a lot of work for these guys to be driving full HD, especially just with those Power VR integrated graphics going on. That said, it's certainly a very nice display. It's, it's not horribly pixelated. It's IPS plus. It's bright. It's got great contrast. It's got very nice colors that are fairly neutral. So nice looking display, but sorry for your, your $1,000 with keyboard dock. You're just not going to be getting full HD here. The upside is that when you're on the desktop here, you don't have to use any DPI scaling. Things are just relatively easy to see, just as they are. And now, you can see what it looks like compared to the HP Envy X2, the other Atom tablet here with the detachable keyboard dock. Now with the Envy X2, the, the dock is actually included in the price, and the list price for this is $849, which we said was kind of high when we reviewed this, but then it quickly went down to $749 at retailers. And now Staples has it for a crazy $5.99 on sale right now. So gosh, if, if money's important, obviously if you don't need the pen, boy, the Envy is pretty attractive. All metal construction here, same size, same weight, similar concept all around. And when we have them opened up, you can see that we're looking at pretty much the same design, the same concept, same size. Uh, just the difference is really a lot of it's the aesthetics. This looks a lot like the typical Envy design here. They have their certain look, and this certainly looks like one of the Asus ZenBook models more so. Both of these have the same resolution display as well. But again, no Wacom digitizer on the Envy. It's supposed to be an Atmel pen coming for this thing. So far it's been MIA for a couple of months, so I wouldn't count on that. And next we have it with another ASUS product. This is the ASUS ZenBook Prime UX 31A Touch. This guy is a three pound Ultrabook, so it weighs the same as this with the keyboard dock. Uh, metal everywhere, very nice, very stylish. This is $100 more. For that you get a Core i5, a 1080p display, and about six hour battery life. So this is actually one of the best for touch battery life. But there is no digital pen and it does not come apart in two pieces. And here we have them opened. Obviously, this is a 13.3 inch Ultrabook. It's going to be a bit bigger. Nice 1080 display going on here. Backlit keyboard as well. $100 more. Again, does not come apart in two pieces. We're still waiting for the Asus Transformer book to see that in action. And lastly, we'll compare it to the 10.1 inch, 1.3 pound Lenovo ThinkPad tablet too. So smaller footprint because it's a smaller tablet, obviously. And this guy is available with an optional Bluetooth keyboard, no battery dock kind of deal going on, but it does have a Wacom pen. Uh-huh. 
smaller. No eraser on the end, but you know, it gets the job done, certainly. And this sells for about $6.59. All right, you graphic artist types, now we're going to take a look at some applications. First off, you know the drill. Wind tab drivers, sorry, no, there are not any wind tab drivers right now. That means no pressure sensitivity in Adobe Photoshop, Paint Tool SAI, or Corel Painter 12 right now, which we've got installed. We're going to test it out anyway just to see how it runs. I believe those drivers are forthcoming. Uh, the one expert there at Adobe who does all the things, Wacom, has his plate full, certainly, with a whole lot of Windows 8 wind tabs drivers needed. Now, something like Sketchbook Express right here, and also Fresh Paint, things that run in the modern UI here are going to work just fine with pressure sensitivity. Now we're drawing, light line, heavy line. There it is, and you can see how quickly it's tracking. It lags a little bit behind my stylus, but not too much. Now, out of the box, by the way, pen accuracy was the terrible. Calibration was just really wonky. I had no ability to touch the top edge of the screen, so go to your tablet PC settings and control panel if that happens to you, and it'll work fine. And diagonal tracking, no staircasing, it's doing a good job even when I'm going slow. Circles, not too bad. Not as immediate as you would see on a Core i5, but of course this guy's going to run a lot longer, so if that's important to you, well, there you have it. So, that is Sketchbook. Now we're going to take a look at ArtRage, which is another application that can use the new Windows Ink API so it doesn't have to have WinTab to work for pressure sensitivity. Let's see how that runs. And we'll open up. Drawing I've been working on. Zooming is a little oops, jerky. Sometimes it doesn't figure out when I'm pinch zooming. Sometimes it does. And in terms of pressure sensitivity, we have it here. I'm going to come under here and give a little shading, a little darker, underneath my apple. And it's working just fine, so I want to fill this in. If I'm doing it lightly, I'm getting a light fill. Now I'm going to do it heavy and see the difference right there. I've got lipsticky reddish pink on my apple right now. There's the line. And this is the pencil tool. There's a heavy line, light line. And if we switch to the paintbrush, light tracking, heavy tracking. Again, there's a little bit of brush lag here, and that's just inherent with the Intel Atom. So for those of you who are wondering about that, that that's what you're going to be putting up with. It's not the end of the world. You just have to get used to the fact that it doesn't always keep up with you if you're going pretty fast at drawing. And now we're in Photoshop CS6, and we're opening up a 6.5 meg JPEG file taken with a digital SLR camera. Once you get the application launched, the speed's actually not that bad. Now, I wouldn't want to edit a 30 meg RAW file with this, but if you've got your average decent quality digital SLR photo, like I said, 6.5 to 10 megs, it's actually not so bad. Now, you're not going to get any pressure sensitivity here for the pen because there are no WinTab drivers, but you can certainly use the pen with some precision to select items highlight them, say you want to crop something out and do a layer, it, it's not bad at all. And for something like filters, we'll do a, an unsharp mask at the default and see how the speed is. And it's just fine and it's quick. And we'll do a rotation. So it's not too bad. Once you get it launched, it's actually pretty usable. So. Once it has WinTab drivers, again, I would expect a little bit of lag tracking the brush, but it certainly is usable for those of you who really need a whole lot of battery power for your portable drawing slate. And now we're going to look at Corel Painter 12. As you can see here, we're working on the slow launch. Come on, we can do it. It's taking so long, it's actually saying not responding up here, but don't believe it. It actually, it will get with the program here. There we go. And now we've got our tools. All right, that takes a while, doesn't it? The 1600 by 900. 
And yes, we have palm rejection here. I don't always put my hand on the screen because I'm trying not to block the screen for you, but we have it. And there's our beginning of yet another apple. It's tracking pretty well even when I'm doing a fairly fast fill with my 2B pencil, so it's fairly usable again. And no eraser here. You do get the eraser in Art Rage 4 because that uses the Windows Ink API. Until we get WinTab, no support for the eraser over here. Sorry. But once you get this app launched, it, it's actually pretty good. However, without the pressure sensitivity, uh, I don't know how much appeal there is. And now we're going to take a look at the free version of One, OneNote that's available in the Microsoft Store here. This does use the Windows Ink API, so as you can see we've got pressure sensitivity right here. And it's keeping up pretty well with what I'm writing over here. Now one thing, once you get to a full page of notes, it does start to get a little bit slower. So if you have a full page of dense notes, you might want to consider breaking this up into several separate notes. The same thing is true of OneNote 2013, the, the standalone version over here. That's just something that's an issue for the Atom tablets in general. But it's pretty responsive, and again, you've got pressure sensitivity. You could actually sketch in here if you wanted to. And now we're in Windows Journal, which is included with Windows. And the inking is working just fine. No pressure sensitivity there. And there's our conversion, and it's pretty quick. So who's the ASUS VivoTab TF810C for? Well, first and foremost, you folks who need a pen, and you need long battery life that the Intel Atom offers. Your nearest competitor is going to be the Samsung Ativ Smart PC 500T for those of you who do need that Wacom pen input. Uh, also, right now Samsung does have WinTab drivers. That's, that's something in favor. You don't have to wait for it with them. But their keyboard dock does not have a battery inside. The nice thing about the Samsung is it's a lot cheaper than this in the United States. The bad thing about the Samsung is it's plasticky for your money. For those of you who don't need the pen, there's the HP Envy X2, and honestly, it's a lot cheaper. It comes with the keyboard dock, has a lot of the same features. Again, no pen, no GPS, though. And lastly, for those of you folks who don't need the transformer dock style, there is a Lenovo ThinkPad Tablet 2 that we showed you. And, of course, there's the Acer Iconia W510, which has its optional dock and is a bit cheaper. Again, no pen in that, and that's a 10.1 inch. So that's the ASUS VivoTab TF810C. It's available now. It's a bit hard to find in stores, at least here in the United States, but gives the Samsung a T500T a run for its money and competes with some other Intel Atom tablets nicely. The only thing that hurts is the price. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website for the full review, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.